every wedding is a fulfillment of many hopes and dreams. Each couple is convinced that his or her own marriage will be better than those who are facing problems. However, challenges in the family unit are not meant to destroy or mar you. They make you a better person. Learning to resolve issues in marriages brings you closer to your spouse. Couples don't just reveal their bodies to themselves alone. They reveal their hearts and mind to their children. They pour themselves into them and it forms their character traits. Hello and welcome to Bond. My name is Meimuna Yahaya. But before we go to our program of the day, let's visit our chance square. Me <laughs> I mean, I want you know, I get Zaria. Oh, Iban, a mere phone, a warning so you don't go back as you don't get it. A book, Iban, as in a good go, a dim media, a common doyen, Mbene, Iban, a riba, Gusong Magara, Mbene, a riba, Yaban, Yaran, and Nigeria, and on your thirty five percent. Yaban, a bunu, Gite, Udubun, Bon, Nigeria, Iban, Nigeria, a bunu, Yarafon, I mean, you may not move. K, Iminian Giban, see warning so, Mben, a deity, a basidium of the woo, a young Iban go. Amen. Welcome back. Can you identify with them? Do you understand anything they've said? I'm sure you enjoyed them. Today, there is a slight deviation from the tradition on bond. We're talking with just a parent. And this is because she is the wife of a seven judge. Ethics of the job. He is not allowed to be seen or heard or grant us interview. Our parent of today is Mrs. Oni Banjo. She's a civil servant. She's someone who's worked since he's been 16 years. Imagine working without using a housemaid in Lagos. It's amazing. And I thought we should meet her. She has a child that I had started by publishing a book from 17 years. How much more? She taught them how to speak her language. If they must ask anything and get anything from her, they must talk to her in their native dialect. What are you doing in your home today? How are you bringing your children up? Let's meet Mrs. Oni Banjo. started work at 16. Yes, I did. You had worked as a banker. Yes. And you never used a housemaid. I never did. Tell me, how? Well, maybe what actually helped was my husband made up his mind that he didn't want any stranger living with us okay. when we got married. So whatever he would take it would, it was going to be of very good help. And I just planned everything with God, you know? All you need to do is wake up in a day, go to school. Although, let me chip this in. Once I have my kid, I have, I've got two. 
my mom comes around until they're about one. And then she, she yes. stays with you? She stays with me until one about one. For one whole year. She goes, my, my parents, had, my dad had retired, had moved back to Ikorodu. So he releases her for me for the week, Monday to Friday. Sometimes she stays the weekend. But once we're back on a Friday, she goes back to Ikorodu. So for the one year, she's with me. At least still they can start a preschool, crutch them, which was right on my street. And then my husband dad he was working for himself. So his own hours were very, very, you know, flexible. So I would go for the nine to five, having planned the day, and then he could close for about four, pick them up. And then I had a younger sister do, but she was schooling as well. She was in secondary school. So they all close about that for common man. Everyone does these are beats. Yes. You have set rules. They must do certain things at certain hours. Yes. Where did that come from? I plan. My, my friends call me a fico. Much as I want to have my phone, I want everything to fall into place. And then I still can't rule out the God factor. Because um, the thing will just like eat right at my mind and then I go for it. So it's like, how come everybody wake up every day, you know, from like 5, 5.30 a.m. in the morning, you know, have your plan, greet your parents, and wash your clothes, go to school, come back, have your siesta, do your homework. When I come back and you're asleep, I'll check. Your bag is right on the dining table and I check what you've gone through for the day. So everybody has their role to play. At what year do they start washing their clothes? At about, as long as, would I say three, if I can remember now. Three but, years. Yes, but since they could, they could use their hand to eat now, my sister. Mm -hmm. So they must know how to use it to wash, to scrub, yes. They had stools to wash plates, you had your stool, just take it and go to the sink and then wash waste stool. By the time you waste for, say, a year, you'll be perfect in it. So the wash, I had this um, soft brush for them. Be in the bathtub. Just put your, whether your shirt, and I told them where a specific area of target, the color, the armpits, so you brush it well, and where they used to sit on the floor. So brush it well, and then, but once you've rinsed, then I help them hang. And then weekend, I have someone who comes in to iron. But basically, I didn't use any. You didn't use I did any not, at, I've never used. That's amazing. I have never used. But on the long run, it's paid off my sister. As a wife of a serving judge, yes, is your fashion restricted in any way? No, mine isn't at all. It is not. But I would say that because I'd worked in a bank before and I'd worked in a law firm, I tend to like the blacks and the greys, but I do mix them up. It's not restricted. Um, I like fashion. I like looking good. I like, you know, everything well put together. So it's not. Mm -mm. Like looking good. Oh, yes, you I do. You love going to parties. Oh, yes. So tell I, me about parties. I have parties no apologies for that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about parties. My friends call me Ajebo, and my, my kids believe oh, her mom is a socialite, but just you just make sure everything is ready at home. We're differently natured and gifted. For some, maybe they have other passion. For me, I like seeing people happy. You know, you enter a party venue and it's like everywhere is gaily decorated, people are looking good, you're smiling, the music is good, you're happy, it distresses you. We already lived in a tensed up environment, so parties just make me for me. I love parties. <laughs> you have a child that has published a book. Yes. How I did do. that come about? And well, at what age? Ah, my daughter started writing as a very young girl. I can't believe she writes good essays, composition in school, and I encourage them, I encourage them to read a lot. If I read a book and it's very nice, I make sure they all, the, my family, the, my husband, my children, I make sure they do read. And for them, I, like, I ask questions to know that they've actually read. So from a very young age, they've always had this broadened mind. And, and I encouraged her, essays, anything she says she writes about. And then suddenly, I think when she was 17, she decided to have a blog okay. and write about various issues. I read them and I was like, oh, this has come to fruition. And for me, that was a good thing. The dad was turning 50 and the idea was, okay, she would like to give that out as a souvenir. Oh. That was how it was published. And we've been getting raves. Oh, really? Yes, Palava Chronicles. That's the title, <laughs> Palava Chronicles. And we do have Palava How in Nigeria. Did you, did you come up with that title? She did. She did. Hmm. She did. And she said the blog is for everybody to like um, 
vent out your frustrations, your anger, all the palaver that we have around. I read the bit of it where she was talking about wanting to kill her brother. Kill her brother. And I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> why? Why would she want to kill her brother? When they were younger, don't mind her. When they were younger, you know, sibling rivalry yeah. and all that. Sometimes she believes the brother gets away with so much. And the brother believes because she's the youngest, she gets away with so much. But of course, they are the best of charms. They, they watch out for each other. I have only two boy and girls, so they don't have a choice. God. <laughs> you have a lead, so have was a lead that a deliberate too. choice? For me, no. I would have wanted like half a dozen. But my husband is, a, I call him man, a black man, a white man in black skin. He wanted a child. And I had my son, and he was like, yes, he wanted one. I was like, ah, thank God. I'm like, eh? excuse me. No, ah. When God didn't make me barren, to his grace, I beg. So when I had the girl, it was like, full stop. If you don't like this true, a boy and a girl, I don't know what else you want. End of story. And I'm, I'm not ready for another marriage. So I decided to just, God, multiply for them, mm -hmm. them for me, bless them. So by choice, I would have had six. How would you have prevented um, household accidents if you had six of them running around through your furnitures and everything? Even with two, you could still have that. I remember my son growing up, and um, a particular side of the house, he knows if he gets there, there's a ruler waiting to, you know, beat him on his knuckles. And my mom then being around, you know, like a crawling child, you want to kill him, I did. And I was like, mommy, mm -mm, you'll finish your one year with me and you'll go back. I'll be left with, so let me train. And three years later, or four years later, when I had Nikke, he was four, she was like one. And she wanted to go somewhere else. And I heard him say, eh, Ade Nikke, you don't know that's your mommy. If you go there, if she catches you. I was in the room, and I'm like, gosh, is that the impression of this boy? <laughs> so he was now the one training her. They know when they get to their toy areas, they can do what they like, and finish and pack back. Let's talk about family timeout. Ah, what yes. do you do with that? <laughs> hmm. There's something we call family timeouts when they were maybe, you know, young, young children, I would say. Like, I can't remember the age they started. Um, we have this thing that we call family timeouts every Sunday. So to say, they come to our bed, in our bedroom, four of us, you know, lying down. <laughs> it's like anything you say here today, just tell us what we're doing wrong. And we'll tell you what we think you're doing wrong as well. Anything you say today is buried, it won't be brought up, you know. And, you know, that helped us, all, all of us in the relationship. But I remember one time, my daughter told me, hmm, this mom mew. Do you know I call her sweet and sour? Why? One day, you, ca you can't use and leave any dirty plates in my sink overnight. Mm -mm, no. So I, I came downstairs and I saw a cup of m used Milo, you know, she had taken beverage. I knew that was Nikkei's cup. So I went to her room, maybe at like 3, 4 a.m. Madam, open your eyes. Oh. When you wake up, you are the one that drank me, Luapi. Your cup is in the sink. When you wake up, as you are coming to greet me, just bring your cane. She said, do you know what I did for her? When I was bringing the cane, I gave her the end that is very painful <laughs> and turned the... <laughs> and, you know, those are the kind of things we get feedback in the relationship. That's our families. You have something against them. Um boarding school for children or day school for children? I'm totally against boarding school. Totally not for it. Sorry if I'm hurting anyone's um, plan and feelings. But for me, those are the years, the six years that the children are properly shaped. You know plasticine that we mold? That is when they're properly molded. In university, they're going to exhibit what you've input. So if a child goes to a boarding school, you only go to see them once a month, and you take them um, fried rice, meat pie, and all that. You just say, how are you? You're fine. Uh, paper, paper, you know, facade. But day school, I used to drop them. I was working in the park. I used to drop them every morning. We chat. I get to know what they're up to. I get to have a feel of who they're, who they're hanging out with. Mm -hmm. And anyone that I'm not comfortable with, you know, I make my reservations known, and I try and create activities that would move them away from such. So you get to, like, sense, pick up, and correct whatever moral you don't want for them to have. 
day school. But for body, well, but it, it could work out for some people. But for me, a day school any time, any day. Why did we have children? You must have time for them. So don't you think you're one of the lucky few ones who could get people around you to help you out with the household and I'm upkeep of the children? No, I, my, no my, dad, my sister had gotten married. She had left the house. My mom had moved back to Ikorodu. Yeah, so it was she, just she us. She comes to stay the first one year. Just, just the first one some year. Some of us don't get that. But age, school age, one year is over. School mm -hmm. age is from like three. Boarding school is from like age nine or ten. Ten, yeah. I was left with them and my husband. So it was just, I drop them in the mornings. He picks them. Sometimes I pick them, depending on how we schedule. But it was a day, for me, it was a day school. Those years we bonded, they are my friends. When we relate, we, they, oh, GBK, sometimes my dad comes and say, oh, GBK, hi, how are you? But she knows when I say, hmm, mom and daughter comes in. But basically, we're friends, honestly. That six years, you can't have it back. Yes, your children could turn out good going to boarding school and all that, but the bond, mm. the bond is formed during those years. They become, that's when the adrenaline and the hormone starts running riots. So you have, a, you have the chance to mold to what you want with God. We talk about Bond, yes. we talked about um, husband, you have mentioned him in the course of talking. Yes. Why is he not here with us? Hmm. I go apologize for that one, my sister. <laughs> <laughs> is the nature of him, by nature, his nature is a very reserved person, is a very private person, and the one who brings him out, and then by his profession. Mm -hmm. It has, um, would I say, help to further restrict him because of the nature of his job. They're not allowed to do all these interviews. If you have to talk to a woman there who is married today, who is going through challenges of some sort, what would you say? I would say the woman makes the home. That's my take. I'm a typical African woman. Forget all these looking good parties and all that. Six. When I get home in the kitchen, I'm a cook, I'm a house girl. In the bedroom, I'm a wife. In the car, well, I suit the role you want me to play. But basically, why did you leave your home to come and marry him? When you obey, when you submit, when you're patient, when you persevere, if you didn't marry a madman, a lunatic, he's going to love you back. Even if he's going through some, you know, the men syndrome, we all know, and all that, is, there will be times I would sit and reflect that this woman is loving, she's caring, she's understanding, She's um, persevering. Yeah. It's not a, an easy role to play, I must tell you. But you've made up your mind you want to marry. Asking God for those ingredients, then make it work. Forget that you're a career woman. Mm -hmm. Forget your PhDs, then stick to that if that's what you want. Don't try marriage. But mm -hmm. when, you, when you go with all those ingredients and with God, you're going to make your own, my sister. I'm telling you, you won't get it wrong with God. You won't get it wrong with God. So persevere, be patient, be loving, be caring, above all, be submissive. What if you have all the ingredients and yet the man, it's impossible, what do you do? When you were cutting each other, there was a meeting point, I love you, do, 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 do. Remind him of those times, lovingly, respectfully. Every man likes their ego, you know, massaged. Fat, massaged. You do that, yes, give him like, You've tried, give him six months of, okay, let's see where we get. My sister, within those period, he would cave in. Ah. Whatever it is, I'm telling you, and with God, you go on your knees. He, he would cave in, honestly. What honestly. if he refuses? He won't refuse. Ah. You, eh? Give me I've that woman. Like that give me that woman. That, and maybe they didn't tell you the whole story. Uh, because okay. I have friends who would abuse their husband, who would like, mm, Kenny. No, you're not going to do that. With him, he, after God is the one. You've left your parents home, forget them. After God is the one. Worship him. Hmm. Yes, what stops in the morning from? I wake up every morning, I kneel down to greet my husband. I pray for Til him. Today. Till today. Till oh, ah. today, wash I wash his clothes. Till today. With his nails? Yes, with his nails. I wash every day. Ah. I wash every day. I wash his clothes. I'm t up till now. You're not going to do that, and the man would, even if he's mad for five minutes. We all have our five minutes of madness. The remaining 55 minutes, he will sit down and reflect. And that would bring him back. 
and with prayers, honestly. Hmm. Give me that challenge to woman and let her tell the whole story, the true story, and then we'll find solutions. That's good. Yeah. It's possible for you to be married, yes. work, yes. and not have um, a maid. You can manage your time. All it takes is proper planning. Yes. And you can run your home effectively and stay married and be happy and a fulfilled woman. So we encourage you today to stay fulfilled, stay married, make it work. Except, of course, it's at the expense of your life. But you just heard that. Everybody has a moment of five minutes madness. So that day could be his five minutes of madness. Let it be. Let it go. Be patient. Be severe. Love yourself. In bonding, we have organizations, companies that are supporting bond and mm -hmm. are saying that we should say thank you to you for letting us into your home. Oh, really? This is Fifi Ovens giving you this lovely cake mm, so lovely. you can keep bonding. Thank you. Mm. Mm, to eat. Welcoming. Really? Yeah, there's burial. You say you can work some more, you can write and sign checks and do well. Oh. And here is a bottle of wine for you to drink. Oh. And rock yourself. Okay, uh -oh. Evanel is saying this can cool your hair while oh, you're that. tired. So yes, you can use it to that. fan yourself and then have peace while you sleep at night. Nepa only Nepa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Evanel. Bar Royal, is that the name? Yeah. And um, Fifi, Fifi Ovens. Ovens. Thank you so much. The things I'm going to use, of course, that's going to my room. <laughs> this I'm going to share with my husband. And this, once I'm done, the gym <laughs> beckons, you know? <laughs> thank you very that's much. It. And thank you for Bond. Thank you. Uh, that's my favorite. Uh, hey, I mentioned it. Yes, Palava Chronicles. You wrote this when you were 17? Yes, I did. What are you doing now with yourself? Um, I'm a law student at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Ghana. So right now, I'm focusing on my school. Now that I'm on holiday, I'm just, I learned how to sew when I was in just three. So I'm you learned just, how to so, sew? Yeah, actually so made, this? I'm the one that made it. I'm not done, I'm not done. Ah. <laughs> I just adjusting it. Like, I made it last night. So, you made it last night? Yes. <laughs> yeah, in your did. room? You in have a sewing machine? machine upstairs, yes, I do. Woo! So, yeah, I just made this last night. Are you going to sew for commercial, commercial purposes? purposes? Yeah, right purposes. now, no. I'm not yet good enough for that, but hopefully, maybe after school, because nothing takes priority over my law. Mm. Okay. So, where's your brother now? He is probably studying for law school or about to go out one of the ah. two. Everybody's going to read law. Yes, I'm the only affair. one that is not learned in this house. But ah. I tell them, when lawyers judge in the house, I'm the administrator. <laughs> <laughs> I control yeah, them, so you know? I know. <laughs> Quite interesting, unique ways of bringing up children. We still have our counselor in the house. Let's meet them. If you mean you know me, you'll be here. If you mean you know me, you'll be here. If you mean you know me, you'll be here. If you mean you know me, you'll be here. If you mean you know me, you'll be here. If you mean you know me, you'll be here. If you mean you know me, you'll be here. If you mean you know me, you'll be here. Me show when you money when you go see ya, me say me no be crazy, baby, baby. Hold on, I teach you me of me. Me and two man can make us a teach you me da. Nan can be your dog a pinta. Mama mo wa kuma ba kumi cha. Mama mo we mo seni. We don't know till we wrap up. Me and your dog a pinta. It's very important for us to understand that God is the owner of children. Um, parents are just caretakers or custodians. 
God has given us children as parents to take care of them on his behalf. And so it's important for us um, to learn um, these two basic things when it comes to parenting. First of all, we need to understand that um, children don't learn only by precept, only by teaching. Children learn by example. And so if we must raise children that would do us proud and do our nation proud, it is very important for us as um, parents to live exemplary, godly life before them. It is the examples that children see that they follow. And that's the first thing we need to understand about parenting. Secondly, um, I would like to talk about discipline. It's important um, that we discipline. As a matter of fact, as a Christian, I know that the Bible um, says, um, spare the rod and spoil the child. And so, um, what is it about discipline that we need to know? It's important for us to establish the reason for discipline. We don't or we should not discipline to punish. We discipline to correct. And so every parent, for you to, um, for you to you know, raise your children well, is important for you to have at the back of your mind any time you are um, meting out a discipline to your child. It's important for you to understand that you are doing that to correct the child. The reason for discipline is not to punish the child. The reason for discipline is not to assert your authority as a parent. The reason for discipline is to bring um, the child to a place of correction. I trust God um, that we all are going to raise children that will make us proud, make the society proud, and make our nation Nigeria proud. Don't forget to join us same time next week on Bond when we bring you away another exciting package. See you.